CMI productions are only made possible with your support. Visit patreon.com slash ACMI to learn how you can help. It is 7.34 p.m. It is March 26, 2024. Good evening. My name is Christian Klein. I'm the chair of the Arlington Zoning Board of Appeals. I'm calling this meeting at the board to order. First, I'd like to confirm all members and anticipated officials are present. Members of the Zoning Board of Appeals, Roger DuPont. Here. Patrick Hanlon. Here. Ben Holly. Here. Dan Riccardelli. Here. Elaine Hoffman. Here. And Adam LeBlanc. Here. Welcome to all. Um, on behalf of the town, we have Colleen Ralston, our zoning assistant. Here. Great to have you with us. <clears throat> so this open meeting of the Arlington Zoning Board of Appeals is being conducted remotely, consistent with an act making appropriations for the fiscal year 2023 to provide supplementing certain existing appropriations and for certain other activities and projects signed into law on March 29, 2023. This act includes an extension until March 31st, 2025, the remote meeting provisions of Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 executive order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, which suspended the requirement to hold all meetings in a publicly accessible physical location. Public bodies may continue holding meetings remotely without a quorum of the public body physically present at a meeting location so long as they provide adequate alternative access to public meetings. With that, I will. Oh, we do have someone in the waiting room, so I will admit them and then go. So public bodies may meet remotely so long as reasonable public access is afforded so the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. Okay. An opportunity for public participation will be provided during the public comment period during each public hearing. For this meeting, the Arlington Zoning Board of Appeals has convened a video conference via the Zoom application. Yeah, you. Uh, I do. I do. I do. With online. Uh, it's being the Arlington Zoning Board of Appeals convened video conference with the Zoom application. Online telephone access is listed in the agenda, posted to the town's website, identifying how the public may join. This meeting is being recorded and it will be broadcast by ACMI. Please be aware attendees are participating by a variety of means. Some attendees are participating by video conference. Others are participating by computer audio or by telephone. Accordingly, please be aware that other folks may be able to see you, your screen name, or another identifier. Please take care to not share personal information. Anything you broadcast may be captured by the recording. We ask you to please maintain decorum during the meeting, including displaying an appropriate background. All supporting materials that have been provided members of this body are available on the town's website unless otherwise noted. The public is encouraged to follow along using the posted agenda. And as chair, I reserve the right to take items out of order in the interest of promoting an orderly meeting. Um, so this evening, we have no hearings, um, but we do have a series of administrative items that we're going to go to. Uh, so moving on to our administrative items, these items relate to the operation of the board and as such will generally be conducted without input from the general public. The board will not take up any new business on prior hearings, nor will there be the introduction of any new information on matters previously brought before the board, unless specifically noted. So item two on our agenda is the uh, approval of the meeting minutes from January 23rd, 2024. Uh, these meetings were put together uh, by Colleen Ralston, submitted to the board for uh, review. And um, if, has everybody had an opportunity to review the minutes and submit anything they had wanted to add? Uh, Mr. Chair? Yes. I just had one quick um, thing that I sent to Colleen just before the, the meeting. Um, okay. There was one typo on um, Ms. Germano's last name in the attendance section of the 312 minute, minutes. Okay, so with the addition of that change may i have a motion to approve the minutes from our january 23rd 2024 meeting mr chairman so moved thank you mr handlin second thank you mr dupont so there's a roll call vote of the members of the board who are present at the january 23rd hearing uh roger dupont aye patrick hanlon aye thank you holly aye elaine hoffman aye adam leblanc aye and the chair votes aye. Those minutes are approved. That brings us to item three on our agenda, which is the approval of the meeting minutes from February 13th, 2024. Again, these are minutes that were prepared by Colleen Ralston, submitted to the board for review. Are there any additional comments on the minutes from February 13th? 
Seeing none, I will accept a motion to approve the minutes from February 13th, 2024. So moved. Second. Thank you, Thanks, DuPont. The vote of the board on the February 13th minutes. Uh, Mr. DuPont. Aye. Mr. Hanlon. Aye. Mr. Holly. Aye. Mr. Riccadelli. Aye. Ms. Hoffman. Aye. Mr. LeBlanc. Aye. Chair votes aye. Those are approved. It comes up to item four on our agenda. It is the approval of the meeting minutes from February 27th, 2024. Again, the minutes prepared by Colleen Ralston submitted to the board for comment. Are there any additional comments on the minutes from February 27th, 2024? Seeing none, the chair will accept a motion to approve the minutes from the February 27th, 2024 meeting. So moved. I uh, second, <laughs> sir. Thank you, Mr. Hanlon. Thank you, Mr. DuPont. So vote of the board on the February 27th minutes. Uh, Roger DuPont. Aye. Patrick Hanlon. Aye. Thank you, Holly. Aye. Uh, Daniel Riccadelli. Aye. Elaine Hoffman. Aye. Adam LeBlanc. Aye. And the chair votes aye. Those are approved. Brings us to item five on our agenda, uh, which is the approval of the meeting minutes from our March 12, 2024 meeting. So uh, again, these were added uh, at the beginning of this week, prepared by uh, Colleen Ralston, submitted to the board for comment. Are there any additional comments in regards to the minutes from March 12? Seeing none, the chair will accept a motion to approve the minutes from our March 12, 2024 meeting. So moved. Second. Thank you, Mr. Hanlon. Thank you, Mr. DuPont. So roll call vote of the board, Mr. DuPont? Aye. Mr. Hanlon? Aye. Mr. Holly? Aye. Mr. Riccardelli? Aye. Ms. Hoffman? Aye. Mr. LeBlanc? Aye. And the chair votes aye. So those minutes are approved. That brings us to item number six on our agenda, um, <clears throat> which is just a placeholder. So our the board holds its uh, election for chair and vice chair in the month of April. Um, and so I am anticipating holding that on at our April 30th meeting of the board. So uh, if there are people who are interested in uh, taking on a leadership role on the board, please let me know. Um, always happy to, to, to share the responsibility to uh, give someone else an opportunity to step up. Um, I've served in this position for four years. Um, it has been a fun position, but it's uh, I am more than willing to train someone else to take it on if they would like to do so. So if you're interested, please let me know. Um, <clears throat> and then that that was item six. And then item seven is review of zoning bylaw changes being considered by the ARB. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So at its March 18th meeting, the redevelopment board voted their recommendations for 10 zoning articles that are gonna be before town meeting. Uh, several of them were brought forward by our board um, and those are recommended for adoption. But I wanna take a few minutes to go through the articles and see if the board wanted to um, discuss anything that will be coming up uh, zoning wise. So the first one is gonna be article 25, which is building definition. So this is the one that has to do with the definition of attached building and detached building, and the fact that the bylaws as they are today have a gap between the two. Um, so the recommendation is to change the definition of attached building to a building having one or more walls or roofs in common with another building or buildings or otherwise connected by a roof to another building or buildings. And then detached is a building that does not meet the definition of attached. So it basically will be nice and clean. Uh, so they recommend favorable action on a vote five to zero. So that will be before the town meeting. Uh, Article 26 is an administrative um, clarification. Um, this is just, there's this, we had asked them, this came out of the question about whether uh, the six foot, the six foot setback applied to um, accessory dwelling units, it didn't seem like it should, but it wasn't listed as an exception. And so uh, what the ARB is going to do is there's a note on the table for residential uses where it lists the exceptions under like section 542B. 
Um, and then this will add section 592B1E to that list of exceptions as well. So um, it will just clarify that the exception that's listed in the um, accessory dwelling unit is an exception to the table. So that's just a clarification. They recommend favorable action on that as well. Um, Article 27 is another correction that we had requested. This is uh, in the accessory dwelling unit section 592B1. It has five bullet points and we had asked them to get rid of the bullets and put something in that we can actually reference. So they are going to now lowercase letter them. So the one we always reference will now be 592B1E. Yeah. So <laughs> that's what we have. Uh, so they have recommended favorable action on that as well. And they're taking, at the same time, they're going to, they're also recommending, um, also in the accessory dwelling units, there is a paragraph that was essentially put there to, for when it was being phased in. Um, and the, so it gives the effective date and when it comes into effect. So they're recommending striking that paragraph because it's no longer relevant. Um, so that is article 27. Uh, Article 28 uh, was recommended. We had asked the question about the Inland Water District and the um, the wetland section that are in the zoning bylaw. Uh, turns out that the one of them we're required to have, so that one is staying. But the Conservation Commission also wanted to get rid of the Inland Wetland Overlay District, um, and so the recommendation is to strike that entire section from the bylaws. Um, so that is going to be going forward. Um, so then the first of the ones that we haven't thought about is Article 29, a reduced height buffer. So this is uh, Section 5319. It's where there's two different districts that are coming together. Uh, there's a, sort of a buffer district between the two for building heights so that there's not a, as big a height difference between a residential and a non-residential use. Um, and there's a couple of different recommendations, but essentially they are looking to uh, change the distance that it would extend into the adjacent parcel. So currently um, there, it depends on the direction now, but like right now it's, if it's north between Northwest and Northeast, the lower height shall apply within 200 feet. They're recommending reducing that to 100 feet um, on the southern side, they're reducing it from 100 to 50, and east and west, they're reducing it from 150 to 75 feet. So um, essentially just reducing the amount of uh, space on the affected property that's going to be affected by the reduced buffer, reduced height buffer. And that's something that they are re recommending favorable action on. Um, Then the next one, Article 30, Shaded Parking Lots. So this is the first of the 10 registered voter articles. Um, so this, it really won't affect us because it only applies to parking lots that are 25 spaces or more, which pretty much by definition has to go before the ARB. Um, but they are, they are voted for favorable action, but it was a three to two vote. Um, so I'm a little curious to see how they present this at town meeting. You know, sort of what their stance is going to be on that one. Um, the next one, Article 32 on traffic visibility. This is uh, to amend the section about um, views across corners and how far back you have to set something from a corner and how low it has to be in order to view across it. Um, that uh, received a vote of no action on a three to two vote so that the actual language will not be in the article unless somebody brings it up specifically at town meeting. So um, their recommendation is not to change what's there existing. Mr. Mm -hmm. Chairman? Yes. just wanted to mention that this was the action that they eventually took was that the was that the uh, was consistent with the request of the of the uh, building inspector. And, ah, okay. Uh, the who was concerned <clears throat> that things that are low to start with may not be so low at, eventually, and it's once you once you have breached the barrier that's there now, it's it would be hard to keep to keep control of it afterwards. 
No, absolutely. I was also concerned that the, the proposed language uh, had an exception for fencing that was, quote, transparent enough. And was really not sure how that was ever going to get defined or enforced. So <laughs> I'm glad it's not coming forward. Uh, Article 33 <clears throat> is rear yard setbacks in business districts. Um, what this appears to be doing is right now, the way the bylaw is written, if you have a building that is uh, three stories or lower, there's a 20 foot setback in the business district. If it is four or more stories, the setback is 30 feet. And what the what the change would be is if you had a building that was four or five stories, the setback for the first three floors would be at 20 feet. And then the for the fourth and fifth floor, the setback would then be 30 feet. Uh, so it effectively, rather than having the entire building have to push back, it's just pushing back the upper floors. So the lower floor can still be closer to the rear lot line as it is today, but the upper floors would be pushed farther back from the rear lot line. And they're recommending favorable action on that. So, Mr. Chair, could I just ask a question? Yeah. So, so that's just the rear yard setback. That's just the rear yard setback, and it's just for in the business districts. Hmm. Okay. Thank you. Yep. And then uh, Article 34 on residential uses. Um, this is the one that would basically do three family everywhere in town. Um, and they recommended a no action, a, a vote of five to zero. The applicants requested that they do so, um, so that they have more of an opportunity to, um, to get some more public support behind it before coming before town meeting. Uh, so that will not be coming before the town meeting unless somebody changes something. What was the substance of that, Mr. Chairman? So what they were recommending was in the R0, R1, and R2 districts that um, the in the use table, the single-family detached dwellings, two-family dwellings, duplex dwellings, and three-family dwellings would be allowed everywhere. Oh. So it's not just limited to single fam to one family in the R0 and R1 and two family in the R2. Okay. Um, I miss, oh, I missed one. Here it is. Article 31. I knew I missed one. Um, so this, or this is one that actually came up as a, an amendment before town meeting last time, uh, which is to add uh, five, seven winter street to the MBTA neighborhood district. So this is a parcel that is immediately adjacent to the parcels that were included in the MBTA communities. Um, the landowner had tried to get it in by an amendment uh, last fall when this came before town meeting, it was voted down. Uh, they're trying again. I love the idea. I love the idea. Thank you. I love the idea. Thank you. Uh, so that's Article 31. Um, and it's, so it's a favorable action on a four to one vote. So I'm curious where that's going to go. And those are the 10 articles. Are there uh, any other questions on any of those articles? I just had one that came to mind. Yeah. Um, for Article 29. Do yep. you think that's sort of in response to the new MBTA zoning bylaws? Um, might be. It's in section 5319. Um, good question. Uh, Pat, if I recall right, the the MBTA C zoning has its own set of setback requirements that are different than these. That's kind of what I remember also, and I'm not quite sure how this, I mean, I guess it sometimes applies. 
I'm not yeah. quite sure where this comes from. It's not a citizen proposed article. It's an ARB proposed article. Right. And I think that the one, the one from the next one, or not the next one, is the one that Andy Greenspun did was something that came up during the discussion of MBT. Uh -huh. a, and I'm, so I'm not, I'm not sure where that came up, but it could because you know you, in the overlay district you do have potential for four or five story buildings by right. So this would change the buffer for those and facilitate um and you know facilitate construction where there's an adjacency. But I didn't remember this being one of the ones that 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 uh advocates of the MBTCA the of the overlay had in mind. But yeah. it but it might have been that's because the overlay is in a different section of the bylaw. It's not under five three nineteen. This isn't limited by any means to the overlay, but it might be prevent. But it might be presented by the overlay, right? In other words, sometimes the overlay will will authorize buildings as high as mm -hmm. four or five, and they'll and there's a boundary that will happen. I haven't looked to see whether or not there's a separate buffer requirement when you do that, but yeah. this wasn't specifically aimed at it, right? But I think it would. I think it would. Unless there's a specific, specifically a different set of setbacks for the MBTAC, this would still apply to MBTAC. Right. Anywhere where there's a boundary where you have, you know, two different height limitations on each side. Mm -hmm. This is specific for land that abuts an R0, R1, R2, or open space. I wonder, I, I don't know if Adam, you were kind of getting at the same question, but I'm just trying to figure out what the the genesis of that is, like what the benefit would be to have uh, a setback up high like that, unless it's, you know, access to white was the concern. It seems like kind of a funny, seems like kind of a funny rule. <laughs> yeah, so it's, you know, it's the, excuse me, it's the, yeah, the, the setback from onto the business, like if this was a business property, it would be the setback on the business property from the residential lot. Um, so yeah, so I think, I'm not sure why the distance is so much deeper on to the north than it, or is it saying that if land in R2, so if the residential is to the north, then this would apply. Yeah. Unfortunately, I wasn't present at the 18th, the meeting on the 18th, because I would have liked to have heard a little bit more about some of these. Um, so you already have the distinction between nor the directions was in the existing bylaw, right? Correct. So whatever the rationale is, that was already there. Yep. All they're doing is they're basically dividing the required distance in half for all the setbacks. And they're no, changing the definition slightly for how it applies. For northwest and northeast, it goes from 200 to 50? So from 200 to 100. What I'm, oh, I'm sorry. Well, I'm reading here is the proposal, and that wasn't necessarily where they came out. Ah, okay. And then easterly between northeast and southeast, or westerly between northwest and southwest, it would be go from 150 to 75. And then southerly between southeast and southwest, it would be... Uh, go from 100 to 50 feet. Okay. So in their hearings, they they increased them. Originally, the proposal from the ARB was to cut them much more than they eventually did. Mm. So they moved in the direction of of not making as big a change. Okay. Any other questions on those? All right. So that was the last item on our agenda tonight. Um, our next meeting is scheduled for March 26th. Oh, no, today is March 26th. Um, so the next 
after this is April 9th. Um, and we do have, I think, one new and two continuances on the 9th. Um, and then we do have a few items on the agenda for the 30th. Um, and the, the meeting on the 30th was originally scheduled for the 23rd, and we opted to move it to the 30th uh, because of the holiday on the 23rd. So um, our next meeting is on the 9th. Is there any yeah. other business before the board? Colleen? Yeah, currently we have four new items for April 30th. Oh, okay. And then, Colleen, did we ever figure out what was going on with Peabody Street or Peabody Road? I have not had any application from them, so okay. I'm not sure what they think they're doing on the 9th. Okay. All right. I'll reach out to the Conservation Commission and get the contact information for them and try to figure out what's going on. All right. Well, unless there's anything else, I will conclude the meeting. Uh, I'd like to thank you all for your participation in tonight's meeting of the Arlington Zoning Board of Appeals. I appreciate everyone's patience throughout the meeting. I'd uh, like to thank uh, Colleen Ralston and uh, Mike Champa for their assistance in preparing for and hosting this online meeting. Please note the purpose of the board's recording the meeting is to ensure the creation of an accurate record of its proceedings. It is our understanding the recording made by ACMI will be available on demand at acmi.tv within the coming days. If anyone has comments or recommendations, please send them via email to zba at town.arlington.ma.us. That email address is also listed on the Zoning Board of Appeals website. Um, and to conclude tonight's meeting, I would ask for a motion to adjourn. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Second. Thank you, Mr. The vote of the board to adjourn. Mr. DuPont. Aye. Mr. Hanlon. Aye. Mr. Holly. Aye. Mr. Riccadelli. Aye. Ms. Hoffman. Aye. Mr. LeBlanc. Aye. And the chair votes aye. The board is adjourned. Thank you all very much for coming in tonight. ACMI productions are only made possible with your support. Visit patreon.com slash ACMI to learn how you can help.